The story begins with the fact that on an ordinary early rainy day the guy was in the dormitory of a university called Jiangcheng. The student's name was Fan Li and he was a first-year student at the university, he didn't worry about anything and just lay in his room on his phone. Fan Li stayed in the dormitory for the summer when, like all the other students, they went home and had fun. Not far from the educational institution, he got several part-time jobs and then he could never imagine something like this. An inexplicable thing was heading towards the university from outer space and Fan Li could not imagine that this summer his life would turn upside down. And suddenly, after a long flight, this thing began to land in the university dormitory, flying through the open window of the room. Suddenly, a flying unknown blue ball landed right in Fan Li's room and began to slowly roll down the floor towards the guy. Suddenly, right in front of Fan Li, this blue ball turned into some strange unknown portal and it was an inexplicable phenomenon. Fan Li was very surprised when he heard some strange sounds in his room and turned around and noticed a strange blue glow and froze in shock. Fan Li could not understand what it was and where this strange thing came from in his room because he did not notice its landing. The student began to slowly move towards her and thought about whether it was a hologram or a wormhole and he thought that it was some kind of nonsense. Fan Li touched this thing and thought that this could not have happened, because he could have encountered a wormhole in some novel, but not in his dorm. The student thought that he shouldn't have guessed what it was and after that he began to enter this portal to see for himself. And then Fan Li froze in surprise because he found himself in a different place where there were houses and all the people were minding their own business. Fan Li wondered if he had really moved to another dimension and wondered what month it was and it was like medieval Europe. And then a local man was minding his own business and wanted to go fishing, but suddenly he noticed a young guy, Fan Li. Local people started pointing their fingers at the guy and shouting something in their own language and Fan Li realized that it looked like he got burned in front of people. Fan Li didn't understand what they were talking about and thought that he would try to address them in English because he didn't know other languages anyway. People stared at the guy and did not understand his language and were shocked by this and thought that this guy was some kind of creature. Fan Li continued to talk to them, but suddenly the people turned around and began to quickly run away from there in fear and shout throughout the entire area. Local residents ran to a nearby building and asked the man for something in their language and wanted to hide in this fortress. And then suddenly armed men began to come out of this building along with their animals and were very angry. Fan Li started to run away from there and thought what these people were up to and realized that they didn't really like the guests there and seemed to even be afraid. Fan Li quickly ran through the portal back to his room and thought that he needed to quickly return back to avoid trouble. But after that, Fan Li turned around and noticed that the evil dog continued to chase him and he realized that he had to come up with something. Fan Li thought that he seemed to have a serious problem and began to think about how to deal with this evil beast. Fan Li stood in shock and thought about how he could close this damned black hole that caused so many troubles in this short time. Fan Li did not understand what to do and began to ask for the door to close already in all existing languages on the planet. But it didn't work and the dangerous beast continued to approach the student and Fan Li didn't know what to do and just looked at this animal. Fan Li prayed that this portal would finally close because the beast was already nearby and could cause him serious injuries. And then Fan Li began to squeeze this portal with his hands and realized that it worked and then the portal began to slowly close. But suddenly, the beast approached and almost bit the student, and Fan Li was seriously frightened by this and began shouting at the entire dormitory. But Fan Li was not at a loss and continued to squeeze this portal in order to completely close it for him and finally he managed to do it and he was saved. And then this portal transformed into a round ball and Fan Li looked at it and did not understand what it was because he had never seen such things before. The student continued to sit on the floor and thought about how this strange thing got to him and was it really a portal to another time? After that, Fan Li calmed down and went to bed, the next day morning came and the student began to prepare for a new busy day. Fan Li's daily schedule was that from 9 to 11 he was engaged in tutoring and pumped up his knowledge from an early age. After school, from 12 to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, he worked as a delivery man and immediately began a busy working day. From 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 4, Fan Li distributed leaflets and earned his pocket money to support himself. From 5 o'clock to 8 in the evening, Fan Li worked as a delivery man, it was very difficult for the student because he worked several jobs. And finally, at almost 9 o'clock in the evening, 
the student returned to the dorm and was glad that after a hard day he could take a break from all sorts of things. Fan Li was heading home and talking on the phone with his mother, he said that he was fine and that he was good at school. Fan Li told his mother that he was fine and did not need money and asked her not to worry because he could pay for his studies himself. Fan Li's mother was happy for her son's success and asked for forgiveness and said that she and his father were of little use and they could not help him. Mom said that his cousin studied abroad and for his studies alone his parents paid 500000 a year and he had to work part-time. Fan Li asked his mother to stop saying such things and said that they had already given him more opportunities than they could have done. Fan Li said that, besides, part-time work would be good for him and said with a smile that at least he would have something to write on his resume after studying. The student asked his mother not to worry about him and asked her to take better care of herself and not worry about all sorts of unnecessary trifles. After the conversation, Fan Li thought that his parents had made a bad investment and now had multi-million dollar debts. Fan Li recalled that his parents had to look for new jobs after retirement to earn extra money. The student remembered that his mother worked as a housekeeper and he saw how much she had aged in just a few months. Fan Li thought about what he could do about it, because he received pennies from stupid part-time jobs in order to somehow help his parents get out of the financial hole. And then Fan Li grabbed that same round ball and said the word money three times and told the ball that he needed this money. But suddenly Fan Li realized that this wormhole he was holding in his hand gave him access to the ancient Middle Ages. Fan Li thought that there must have been a lot of valuable items there, and if you started trading with the guys on the other side of the hole, you could make some serious money. The student remembered that the most common spices for them at that time were considered real luxury items and pepper was even called black gold. Fan Li was very happy and realized that any modern consumer goods would seem to them like some kind of wonderful and incomparable thing. And then Fan Li shouted that he would be a huckster and become very rich and would immediately buy himself an expensive car and live in a mansion. People were indignant and asked the student why he was yelling so much and he scared them to death and apparently from the desire to get rich he went crazy because it was fashionable among young people. But Fan Li remembered that these guys from the Middle Ages were completely unfriendly and, moreover, he couldn't even speak their language. The student thought for a long time and came to the conclusion that he didn't care about all this because the potential benefits justified all the risks. The student thought that since heaven had rewarded him with this wormhole, he had to take full advantage of this gift. And then Fan Li came to the supermarket and bought dried meat, star anise, black pepper and many other spices. Fan Li bought all the necessary products for future trade and thought that these products should have been enough for the first time. The student thought that all he had to do was buy a camping kit, and he immediately headed to a military store to prepare for the future trip. Fan Li bought a bulletproof vest, an army knife, pepper spray and a stun gun and realized that now he was ready for further action. But the student was very upset that he had almost spent half of his monthly salary and had very little money left. After all the purchases made, returning to the dorm, Fan Li noticed that something strange had appeared on the surface of the round ball. Fan Li wondered what it could be and then he clicked on this strange thing and suddenly a strange ray began to appear from it. And suddenly this beam hit the student's head and Fan Li closed his eyes and thought what it could be because he felt that something was happening. And suddenly when he opened his eyes, Fan Li held a ball in his hand and noticed a screen in front of him like a hologram and thought what it was. The student noticed that it was written that the beginner's task was completed and the goal of purchasing equipment was also successfully completed. For these tasks, Fan Li received the reward of understanding the West Norman language and realized that he could now speak the language of the barbarians. Fan Li studied this device and wondered if he now had a system because all his actions that were performed were written there. And then suddenly the ball rolled from Fan Li's hands and suddenly that same portal appeared in front of the student again and Fan Li was blinded by the brightness. Fan Li was surprised that this hole opened again by itself and he could not understand the reason for this and thought that it was strange. But suddenly an angry dog appeared from the portal and she immediately jumped towards the student and wanted to end him once and for all. But Fan Li was not taken aback and immediately turned on the shocker and shocked the beast to protect himself from the attack of this mad dog. After such a blow, the body of a dog fell on the student and passed out right before attacking young Fan Li. Fan Li was surprised why this dog was there again and immediately he had one guess that answered all the questions. After this, the student looked into this portal and realized that his guess was correct and when this mountain closed, 
time in another dimension stopped. Fan Li guessed that time had stopped there by looking at the frozen people who wanted to attack him last time. After this, Fan Li completely entered this portal and immediately began to close it, turning it into the original position of a round ball. And then suddenly Fan Li heard a voice behind him, local people asked him questions and asked what he was doing there. Fan Li decided that he would try to communicate with them in their language and told the local man that he had been asked this question. The resident angrily asked the student not to be a fool and said that there was no one there except him and this question was asked specifically to him. Fan Li said that he was a merchant and came to them from the eastern lands to engage in trade and he did not have any bad thoughts. People said that this merchant was dressed strangely and behaved very suspiciously and they thought that he was a sorcerer. Fan Li smiled and handed the bag to the people and said that it was a small present in honor of their acquaintance. People looked at the bag in surprise and wondered if it was black pepper, because they had never seen pepper and thought that rich people loved it. The man told the resident to get away from him and said that he saw everything and asked him not to pretend to be in front of a stranger. The man smiled and told Fan Li that he really was a merchant and said that then this explained everything. The man asked Fan Li to follow him and said that he would take him to the Lord and thought that he would be interested in his goods. After this, the man took Fan Li to some person and the student looked at him carefully and thought was it really their local feudal lord. Fan Li could not believe that the local leader looked like this, and meanwhile the feudal lord was sitting on his throne next to some girl. The feudal lord sat on the throne and drank various drinks with the girl and behaved very strangely, he pestered this girl in every possible way. Fan Li watched this in surprise and realized that the depraved descriptions of those in power during the Middle Ages were not fiction. And then suddenly a screen appeared in front of Fan Li where there was a task to take the throne in order to become the dominant emperor and acquire a support base. Fan Li's first task was to conquer this settlement of Angelinia, and he was very surprised by such a task at the initial stage. It was written there that the punishment for failure was to be the death of the owner and he froze in shock after reading this. Fan Li thought that as soon as he stopped by to visit the local feudal lord, the system immediately demanded that he take the throne and he wondered where the stakes were so high. Fan Li dreamed that this system would close soon, because if people saw this, he would immediately end and he was afraid of it. And then suddenly a resident looked at him and asked what he was doing just now and asked if in his country it was customary to say hello like that. Fan Li was very surprised and turned around and asked the resident if he really hadn't noticed anything and the man asked what he had been telling him all this time. Fan Li said that he didn't talk about anything and thought that it was great because he realized that only he could see this system. Fan Li was very angry and thought how could he come to terms with the fact that there was such a punishment as the death of the owner. Fan Li thought that he did not want to become any ruling emperor and only needed to earn some money. After all, he had no goal of ruling anyone and he was not interested in it because he was an ordinary peaceful guy and wanted to live a quiet life without headaches. Fan Li wanted to first see if he could get some money there today, and if he couldn't do it, he wanted to crush this ball under a hydraulic press. Fan Li approached my lord and said that he was a merchant from the eastern lands and had come to them to trade spices. The student said that these spices were carefully grown by the best farmers of their country and were of the highest quality. Fan Li said that the greatest magicians enchanted these spices into packages so that the spices would not lose their taste for a long time. Fan Li said that the room where they were kept was filled with the music of famous musicians to maintain an atmosphere of prosperity. Fan Li confidently said that it was better than any spice they had ever tasted before that day and they were very lucky. Fan Li took out a bag of spices and said that it was a sample and asked the feudal lord to look at these wonderful spices. The feudal lord listened to Fan Li and then suddenly stood up from his throne, he leaned towards him and it was very strange. And then all the residents sitting there began to laugh and said that their leader was the best at making jokes about inexperienced and young guests. The feudal lord asked Fan Li if it was really customary to say hello like that in his country and said that it was just hilarious. The head told Fan Li that they had different customs there and ordered him to sit on his knees and learn to address the local lord. The head smiled and asked Fan Li what he was talking about just now and what he came with, the head said did he really turn to him with his spices? And then the head looked menacingly at Fan Li and said that in this case he could leave all the spices there and quickly get out of there. And then Fan Li realized that these barbarians took politeness for weakness and it was impossible to talk to them like that, the student thought how he could put this savage in his place. 
Fan Li looked at the head and said that he had listened to him well and asked if he really wanted to take his spices from him using force. Fan Li menacingly told the head that their trading camp was 200 meters from there and asked if he wanted to threaten them too and said that they could drown his city in blood. And then suddenly the head acted as if he was very frightened by these words and said that this could not have happened and he was very frightened by it. And then suddenly all the sitting residents began to laugh even harder and said that the head had no equal in mocking people. The leader began to approach him and said that Fan Li considered himself a daring guy and said that he couldn't wait to see what else their trading camp was rich in. Fan Li realized that the head did not fall for this bluff and thought that he was also good and initially he wanted to scare the lion with meat. Fan Li began to slowly take out his knife and the head at that moment came very close to him and suddenly took out his sword and swung it. Fan Li did not have time to get his knife and the head quickly pointed the sword at his neck and said that Fan Li that he was very slow and it was immediately clear that he was a greenhorn. And then suddenly the head took out a baton from Fan Li's pocket and asked him what kind of weapon it was that he carried with him for the attack. The head smiled and, hitting his leg, asked Fan Li if it was really a toy baton for children because it did not cause any damage. And then suddenly a man began to move quickly towards them and asked them to stop doing this and asked everyone to calm down. The man asked the head why he did this to Fan Li and said that the merchants had a difficult job and if they communicated with them like that, they would stop trading with them. The man approached Fan Li and asked him not to pay attention to the head and said that he was drunk and handed him his baton, the man asked him if he was injured. And then suddenly a man came up to this man and called him my lord and asked permission to carry out some task in this place. Fan Li froze in surprise and wondered if this man was my lord and asked him if he was the local feudal lord. The man really was the feudal lord of the city of Angelinia and his name was Lord Tamadi and he enjoyed authority among the entire population and everyone respected him. Fan Li was surprised and asked Tamadi why that man was sitting on the throne and Tamadi said that it was just a big chair and he could sit on it if he liked. And then a man approached him and told my lord that with all due respect, these mercenaries had already become insolent in the region and if they continued to manage there, it would lead to serious trouble. Tamadi listened carefully to the words of his man and, getting angry, asked if they could not do without them if they behaved like that. Tamadi looked at Fan Li and asked if he meant spices, if he was not mistaken and asked to show him these wonderful spices. After that, they sat down at the table and Tamadi told the student that he had spices for every taste and he saw some of them for the first time and, picking up star anise, asked what it was. Tamadi closely observed the ingredient and Fan Li said that it was star anise and it was an indispensable ingredient when stewing meat. Tamadi said that Fan Li's spices were excellent and he was delighted with his goods and was happy to buy them quickly. And then a man came up to them and told my lord that he had weighed everything and there were five pounds of pure weight and only six types of spices of the highest quality. The head of Tamadi said that for five pounds he usually paid thirty-five notes but added that for Fan Li spices he did not mind paying all 40 notes. Tamadi handed Fan Li a bag of money and asked him to count it, Fan Li thought that this was the first time he had heard about their currency and the main thing was that he could then sell them at home. But suddenly opening the bag, Fan Li was shocked because there he saw a lot of gold and thought that it was wonderful and he was simply worried. Fan Li began to bite these coins and thought that such pure gold was undoubtedly valued in any dimension and this time he was very lucky. The student realized that on the whole he could consider this foray successful because even though they were barbarians, it was possible to do business with them. Tamadi asked Fan Li if he had counted the coins to the end and whether there was an exact number of coins and Fan Li said that everything was correct there. The girl began to lift the student and Tamadi said that he must be very tired from the road and asked if he would rest in their area. Tamadi remembered and said that he still didn't know his name and the student said that his name was Fan Li and was perplexed by what this girl was doing there. Tamadi thought about the student's name and asked a girl named Naya to take care of Mr. Fan Li and she immediately agreed with the head. The girl began to drag him somewhere to the side and Fan Li did not understand anything and asked Tamadi what was happening there and demanded an explanation. The boys from these regions quietly watched them and realized that it was Naya and she took them to serve a visiting merchant who had recently come to their region. And then the boys happily ran after them and said that they would soon see the show with their own eyes because they had been waiting for it for so long. And then the man asked Nia if she really had a new friend and asked when it would be his turn because he had been dreaming about this for many years. 
Naya turned to the local resident and said that he might not have expected this and said that this would not happen not in this life and not even in the next. After that, Naya quickly pushed Fan Li into a building and immediately closed the door in front of her, Fan Li couldn't understand what was happening there. All the boys quickly ran there and asked everyone to get ready and said that the long-awaited show was about to begin. Naya asked the guy not to worry and said that she would not hurt him and would just play with him and he should just sit and do nothing and enjoy. After they played, Fan Li fell asleep there and then he began to slowly wake up and Naya came up to him and asked if he finally woke up. Naya said that Lord Tamati had just come to them and he brought food for him and asked him to get up and eat before it got cold. Fan Li thanked Naya and started eating because during all this time he was very hungry and Naya began to cook the dish over the fire. Fan Li remembered that last night he didn't hold back at all, it was not in vain that they said that even heroes had difficulty resisting the beauty's charms. And Fan Li was an ordinary guy and he was happy to play with such a beautiful girl like Naya because besides, she was very kind. Fan Li asked Naya if their lord really treated all the merchants so well and said that it was pleasant to do business with him and he paid generously for his spices. Fan Li said that besides, the lord brought him breakfast and he even felt a little embarrassed from treating him so politely. Naya asked Fan Li to relax and said that Lord Tamati was a very unusual ruler and he could not be bothered by such a pleasant treatment. Naya said that Tamati was very fair and he led a very modest lifestyle and in a normal situation he would never have spent that amount of money on spices. But she said that recently their districts were full of robbers and merchants avoided them and he treated him this way because he hoped to continue doing business with him. Naya said that Tamati was also very sensitive to his reputation and he could be called a man of word and honor, and Fan Li could be calm. Fan Li thought that Tamati could become a permanent partner, but he did not understand why the system demanded that he be overthrown from the throne and he thought of choosing another place. But suddenly the system prompted Fan Li that the owner did not have the authority to perform this action and he was unable to do it. Fan Li realized that he was as if taken hostage, because whether the person was good or bad, he still needed to eliminate anyone whom the system pointed out. And then Fan Li and Naya suddenly heard some sounds outside and the student was very surprised and thought what was happening there, that there was such a fuss there. They went outside and saw that everyone was preparing for something and the man told everyone that they had just been attacked and they had to prepare to retaliate. Fan Li was very surprised by these words and said that he would now go there and see what was really happening there, Naya wanted to go with him. But the man came up to them and said that he told all the women to stay inside and lock the doors and the rest to follow him. And then Fan Li took the pepper spray and handed it to Naya, he said that if someone came up to her, she should just spray it in their face. Fan Li asked Naya to sit there and not leave there, he promised that he would return for her very soon and asked her to take care of herself. Fan Li approached the tower and people were saying that the robbers had already gone completely crazy and this was just a bunch of wanderers who would leave from there after getting what they needed. The bandits stood at the gate and told Lord Tamati that they had simple demands and asked him to give them some grain so that they could survive the winter. But the robbers asked to give them some gold in addition to the grain, and they also wanted to update their clothes because they were tired of wearing stinking old clothes. And then one of them shouted that they still wanted women and they didn't want to leave there without them and asked who was supposed to warm their beds then. But one of them asked an accomplice how they got so many women and the robber said that it didn't matter because they wanted to take all the women. Lord Tamati climbed the tower and became very angry and thought that these robbers were cattle and something had to be done with them because they had completely lost fear. Tamati told the robbers that they were freaks and asked them not to even hope to leave there today with loot and said that they would not get anything. And then Lord Tamati asked his warriors to listen to him and ordered them to take weapons and climb the wall to prepare for battle with these freaks. But then, when all the residents were preparing for battle, they noticed that the robbers began to retreat from there and wondered if they really got scared so quickly. But one of the robbers looked in their direction and smiled slyly at the soldiers and the residents realized that this was not good and they were clearly planning something. Fan Li said that it seemed they were waiting for something and thought that they were waiting for reinforcements to strike their city and take them by surprise. The robber smiled and said that everything was supposed to begin soon and added that this night was supposed to be hot and unforgettable for all people. And then suddenly one of the soldiers began to run towards the wall and announced the alarm and shouted that a fire had started and the barn was all on fire. The head of Tamati could not believe it and, turning around, 
was personally convinced that this barn was indeed captured by fire and all the people ran there and tried to put out the fire. The head of Tamati was very surprised by this and thought why this happened right now and realized that this fire was not an accident and the robbers were involved in it. And then the resident informed my lord that the robbers had gone on the offensive and said that they had to quickly move on to retaliatory strikes. And then robbers on horseback began running towards them, there were a lot of them and they were all armed and prepared for attack. The robber ordered his boys to grab everything they could take, including gold, the belongings of these residents, as well as all their beloved women. All the robbers agreed with their leader and said that they would go to the end and would not leave these pitiful people anything for their future security and would finish everyone off. Family looked at all this and wondered if they really had their own people in the city who helped them get inside and suggested emergency entrances. Fanley realized that he had a bad feeling and he needed to get out of there right away because he could easily die in this massacre. The head of Tamati looked at the actions of his enemies and ordered Morgan to take people to put out the fire and Morgan immediately agreed with Milad and said that they would quickly put out the fire. The head of Tamati ordered the rest of the people to defend the city and not retreat and said that they were just a bunch of vagabonds and they would regret coming to them with a sword. At that moment, the same resident who threatened Fan Li stood in front of the robbers and all the robbers were waiting for his command to launch an attack and destroy everyone. The man looked at the situation in the city and immediately gave the command to the robbers that they could launch a covert attack and mislead all the people. And then a resident came to the warrior and said that apparently he was one of the mercenaries hired by the lord and asked him not to worry and said that all the gates were well fortified. The resident said that these brutes would not break through to them so easily and asked him to better go to the wall and help the rest of the warriors defend their city. The warrior said that he was already running there and said that he was already running there and he came here to check the situation and behind him a man with a knife in his hand began to approach. These were traitors and they quickly put an end to the local resident when their partner distracted him with his stories about how he defended the city with all his heart. The warrior noticed this and ran up to my lord and said that the robbers had already broken through the gate, the head of Tamati thought about how this was possible. And suddenly turning around, Tamati noticed that the mercenaries were destroying all his warriors on the roof and attacking them from the back and took them by surprise. Tamati did not understand what was happening there and was shocked that they were attacked by mercenaries whom they themselves hired to defend the city. And then suddenly someone called my lord and grabbed him by the shoulder, this was the same mercenary who had a conflict with Fanley, Tamati was shocked by his behavior. The mercenary thanked Tamati for generously paying for their services and said that he was forced to inform him that their cooperation was completed. The head of Tamati could not understand what this mercenary was talking about and suddenly he dealt a fatal blow to the head from behind with his sword and said that his time had come to an end. After that, all the gates opened there and mercenaries immediately ran in on horses and ordered all their people to deal with all these cattle and not spare anyone. The robbers left no chance for the residents and they could no longer resist the enemies because there were many more of them and they were all armed and thanks to betrayal they defeated them. Fanley watched all this and thought that he knew that trouble was to be expected from these mercenaries and his instincts did not let him down this time either. Meanwhile, the robbers fired arrows and began to destroy everyone with the help of hundreds of fired arrows and the residents could no longer defend themselves. Fanley watched this massacre and realized that it was impossible to stay there and he more than once imagined himself in the image of a brave general rushing into battle. But finding himself in such a situation, Fanley could barely drag his feet out of there and could not understand why they had become so limp and realized that in this life there was nothing more important than life itself. And then Fan Li quickly got to the barn, thought that he needed to get out of there quickly and he began to call Nia, but she did not respond to his call at all. Fan Li could not understand where she could have gone because he asked her not to go anywhere and stay there so as not to get into trouble. Fan Li realized that he had nothing to do and would have to quickly get out of there without her since he did not have time to look for her at such a moment. Fan Li opened a portal and just wanted to escape from there, but suddenly he heard the voice of a girl who asked to let her go and he realized that it was Naya. The robber pestered her and said that he could not think that in such a wretched place it was possible to find such a beautiful lady like her and did not want to let her go anywhere. And then suddenly the scoundrel began to attack her and asked her not to resist him, and he wanted her to be only with him and go with him to distant lands. Fanley watched all this and thought that this freak still didn't want to let poor Naya go because she resisted him and begged him to let her go. 
The villain continued to harass Naya and told her that she was just fire and said that he was very lucky this time and he found a real treasure. Naya was not taken aback and immediately sprayed the scoundrel with pepper spray and said that he could taste it better and said that he would like it. The scoundrel immediately began to writhe in pain and said that his eyes were very painful and he could not see anything, and Naya began to quickly escape from his embrace. The robber called Naya a witch and asked what she did to him and Fanley asked her to quickly approach him using this opportunity. Naya was happy to see the student and began to run towards him and suddenly the scoundrel told her to stand and without looking he threw a spear at her and hit her right on target. Fanley was shocked by this and ran up to Naya and asked her to hold on and just not die, but she told him to leave her there and get out of there quickly. And then suddenly the robber took aim at Fanley and threw an arrow at him and hit him right in the stomach and he immediately fell to the ground from such a blow. But fortunately he hit Fanley's body armor, but he was still in a lot of pain and he realized that it was very difficult for him to breathe because it was a strong shot. And then all the villains gathered in front of Fanley and their accomplice said that some which had blinded him with a strange thing and he still hadn't seen anything. The robber asked his people if he hit this impudent guy and if he died but they said that he seemed to be unharmed and was alive, and he asked them to finish off the insolent guy. And then Fan Li ran to the next building and the villains were surprised and said that this guy was stupid because who was hiding in the wooden hut and they said that they would burn down this barn. Fan Li quickly went into this barn and locked himself there, he was not at a loss and, having opened the portal, quickly ran inside to hide from these scoundrels. But suddenly, when Fan Li found himself in his room, he tripped over the dog lying there and fell to the floor and could not get up for several seconds. Fanley was in a lot of pain and he thought that he had completely forgotten about this beast, and then he took the dog in his arms and threw it back into the Middle Ages. After that, Fanley began to quickly close the portal so as not to run into trouble with this crazy gang of robbers and to avoid other problems. After that, Fanley finally sat down on a chair and was able to calm down after such unexpected events that happened to him in one day. Fanley thought that he shouldn't have returned there anymore, because coming there again meant that he was ready for certain death. Fanley was very sad and he thought that he would never see Nia again, after all, she was his first girlfriend. The student thought that the system could not require him to complete a task in another dimension while he himself was in this world. Fanley thought that it was like in a game because it was impossible to fail the mission without opening the game and what complaints could there be against him. Fanley thought that he would consider it all a nightmare because in the end he didn't lose anything, but he was able to meet his love. And then suddenly a system appeared in front of him where his task was still to take the throne and the punishment for failure was the death of the owner. And then suddenly an inscription appeared that Fanley had 48 earthly hours left to complete the task, and suddenly a timer appeared in front of him. Fan Li was very surprised about the punishment for failure and wondered whether it was possible to find out more specifically about this punishment. But then suddenly a notification appeared that more detailed information was unavailable and Fan Li wondered if he really only had 48 hours to live. The student was very scared by this and thought what kind of jokes they were and what right did this ball have to take other people's lives. Fan Li realized that first he needed to calm down and he had to pull himself together and think about a further plan of action. And then Fan Li remembered the words of his great leader that no power could resist the barrel at his temple and he could complete the task only with the help of brute force. Fan Li thought that Lord Tamati was already dead and now Angelinia had no ruler and he just needed to defeat the robbers and mercenaries. And then the power itself would have ended up in the hands of Fan Li but he thought how he could defeat all of them and where he could get weapons for confrontation. In their country, firearms were completely banned and he could not get them even on the black market, but he thought maybe he could buy weapons abroad. But the student realized that he would not be able to do this because he did not have time to fly somewhere and even after taking out the barrel, he was not sure that he could shoot at a person. And then suddenly the student had an idea and he started looking for the information he needed on the internet and thought that this was the only solution. The next day, the first thing Fan Li did was go to the bank to exchange gold money for normal money so that he could spend it. The bank employee told Mr. Li that at the current price of gold, he could get 90,000 yuan and said that the entire amount had already been deposited into his account. Then the student found a car service on the outskirts of the city because he strictly followed his plan and in the end everything should have worked out for him. Fan Li went inside and handed the flash drive to the employee and said that he needed him to do this and the matter was urgent and the result was needed tomorrow. 
The employee inserted the flash drive into the computer and was very surprised, he asked Fan Li if he had really watched a lot of films about the zombie apocalypse. The worker asked the student what he was going to do with such a thing, but he said that his drawings were funny and he liked it. Fan Li said that it was equipment for filming and he was a novice director and he needed it for his new film. The worker said that now everything became clear to him and said that he doubted that it should have been ready tomorrow because it was difficult to do. Fan Li said that he paid 30,000 and it was only for the work and he paid for the material separately and gave money in advance, but everything had to be done quickly and reliably. The employee was shocked by this because it was a lot of money and no one had ever paid him that amount before, and he immediately tried to do everything in a short time. After this, the student went to the market and chose a car that was suitable for himself so that the mechanic could carry out all his plans regarding this car. And almost all the remaining time Fan Li helped the mechanic with her own order so that she could have time to complete everything and not fail the task. And after hard work and so much wasted time, fortunately for the student, they managed to change the car beyond recognition in time so that it was according to plan. The worker himself was happy and said that every guy at least once dreamed of a doomsday machine and they finally completed this task. And finally the cool apocalypse machine was ready and the mechanic said that it was the ideal machine for insane violence like in the movies. The mechanic said that he replaced the engine and strengthened the body, balanced everything and said that there should be no problems while driving. The mechanic said that Fan Li would have to call a tow truck because such a car could not be driven around the city, but the student said that he did not have time for that and grabbed the keys. Fan Li immediately left there and the mechanic ran after him and said that the asshole had already left and asked him not to mention his car service if he was caught. At this time, the inspector was issuing a fine to some person and he immediately left the store and asked the inspector not to do this. The man smiled and told the commander that it was already night outside and he literally went into the store for groceries for five minutes and asked if he could forgive him this time. The inspector said that he was not interested in time and five minutes was also considered time and gave him a fine of five yuan and also minus three points. But suddenly Fan Li walked in front of the inspector in his car at top speed, the inspector froze in place in surprise. The man also looked at this car and could not understand what it was and the inspector was also at a loss and thought that the offender had to be caught right away. The inspector immediately got on his motorcycle and chased after Fan Li's car, the inspector ordered the student to immediately pull to the side of the road and stop the car. And then Fan Li realized that he had problems and he fully pressed the gas pedal and quickly disappeared from this persistent inspector. The inspector realized that it was a homemade vehicle that did not meet any safety requirements and that it was a dangerous car. The inspector realized that this strange machine posed a danger to both people and city property and it was necessary to get rid of it quickly. At this time, Fan Li hid in a place where construction work was being carried out and, having opened a portal there, was about to set off and thought that the moment of truth was close. At the same time, in another dimension, the mercenaries burned the barn and it continued to blaze with flames and the villains thought that for some reason the impudent boy was now silent. The robbers hoped to listen to the sweet squeal of Fan Li and thought that it seemed that this weakling immediately suffocated and went to the next world. But suddenly they heard some kind of roar in the barn and thought what those sounds were because they had previously realized that there was no one there. But suddenly Fan Li appeared in front of them in his apocalypse car and began to move towards these scoundrels to take revenge on them. The mercenaries froze in surprise and could not understand what it was because they had never seen anything like this before and it seemed like magic. Fan Li began to mercilessly attack all the villains in his special machine, and people could not cope with the equipment and did not know what to do next. The mercenary who pestered Naya lay on the ground and suffered from pain, he wondered what kind of hellish creature it was that didn't feel any pain. Fan Li began to approach him in a car and the mercenary asked what kind of monster it was and asked not to approach him. But suddenly Fan Li quickly dealt with this mercenary and sent him to the next world and he screamed in pain and could no longer resist. The rest of the robbers saw the body of their accomplice and, very frightened, began to run away from there and ask for help from the heavenly powers to save them. Fan Li sat in the car and thought about whether he really killed this mercenary in such a cruel way and couldn't get it out of his head. But Fan Li decided that he shouldn't think about him because first of all he needed to save Naya because she was seriously injured by this scoundrel. Fan Li opened the door and was about to get out of the car, 
but suddenly he saw all this horror and immediately he vomited from it because the pungent smell of blood hit his nose. And then Fan Li quickly ran to Naya and asked her to hold on and said that he would save her now, Naya almost lost consciousness but she recognized Mr. Fan Li. Fan Li looked at her and realized that the wound was very serious and without modern medicine Nia would not have been able to survive in such conditions. And to begin with, Fan Li took out a fire extinguisher from the trunk and put out the fire so that the fire did not engulf neighboring buildings and incinerate the entire city. After that, Fan Li took Naya in his arms and asked her to be patient for a while and, opening the portal, began to move towards him to save the life of an innocent girl. And when Fan Li passed through the portal, Naya was very surprised and asked the gentleman where they were, but the student said that later he would answer all her questions. Fan Li carefully laid Naya on his bed and asked her to wait for him there for a while and said that very soon he would return for her and help her. Fan Li went back to the Middle Ages and looked at the timer and noticed that he only had 12 earthly minutes left and that was very little. Fan Li understood what it means if you close a wormhole after moving to another dimension, then time in his dimension also stops. At this time, the mercenaries tied up all the inhabitants of the city and carried them to be sold as slaves and the trader told Morgan that he could get rich just by selling slaves. The trader told Morgan that he knew his name and he was a strong warrior and he invited Morgan to work for him to earn money for himself. But suddenly Morgan approached the mercenary and spat in his face and said that he would never work for such a lying rat like him who did not know what honor meant. Morgan called him a traitor and asked him to finish him off right away and said that otherwise in the future he would return for him to take revenge on him for all this. The traitor wiped his face and called Morgan a fool and asked if he was so eager to die that he did such idiotic things. The traitor immediately took out his sword and told Morgan that he would immediately fulfill his wish and quickly send him to the next world to his head Tamadi. But suddenly the mercenary asked his boss to look there and said that he did not understand what was happening there and there was a strange creature standing there. And then suddenly Fan Li drove up to them and turned on his headlights to attract the attention of these scoundrels who didn't care about other people's lives. The robber was surprised and asked the mercenary what it was because it looked very ominous and made people afraid of him. The mercenary asked if these hillbillies could come up with something scary and thought that they probably built this thing to scare children. The mercenary ordered his men to quickly go there and pull out whoever was operating this thing so that he could deal with this troublemaker himself. And then Fan Li blinded them with his headlight and then began to quickly move towards them to deal with them all. Fan Li began to quickly smash them all, since no one at that time knew how to cope with such a previously unknown destruction machine and everyone was in shock. The traitor mercenary looked at it all and could not believe his eyes because his people were armed with swords and shields but could not do anything to oppose this monster. But then the mercenary ordered his people to build a wall of shields for defense and they immediately carried out the order and ordered everyone to keep the line. Fan Li at this time remembered the words of the mechanic that he had installed a powerful engine with maximum volume and torque and made it sophisticated. The mechanic asked Fan Li to take into account the fact that it was not some beautiful dummy and said that this monster could even be driven through a wall and it would not be difficult. Suddenly, Fan Li began to move at great speed towards the wall and was confident that he would succeed because his drawing was completed without errors. The mercenary was very surprised and did not know what kind of hellish monster it was, because even a thoroughbred horse could not develop such a speed and it was unexpected. Fan Li rode along this wall and easily defeated the plans of the enemies and did not leave them any chance for further defense because he was invulnerable in this monster. The mercenary robber and Morgan froze in surprise and could not understand what kind of monster this was that could single-handedly defeat armies in battles. The mercenaries were shocked and said that this power was not from this world and this was a chariot from the underworld and their actions enraged the gods themselves. The mercenary told his boss that demons from hell had come to personally punish them for their sinful deeds and asked him to quickly escape from there. The robber agreed with the words of the mercenary and said that he, too, could no longer stay there because it would not lead to anything good and was about to leave there. But the mercenary stopped him and asked if he really decided to just take it and run away because they had been hatching this plan for a very long time and on the threshold of success he wanted to give up everything. The robber asked what else they could do because this was a chariot of the demons of hell or worse and asked if he really wanted to wait for his death there. The mercenary told him that everything was clear with him and he turned out to be a simple coward and said that he knew that people like them had to plow the land of the feudal lords. 
The robber thought and told him that if he wanted to die there, then he was glad to keep him company and was no longer afraid of this monster and was ready for a fight. But he asked the mercenary to take back his words that he was a coward, but suddenly the mercenary asked him to look at the one who was sitting on this monster. The traitor mercenary smiled and said that moreover, he might not believe him, but he knew the one who controlled this monster because they had recently crossed paths with him. The robber looked at the monster and agreed with the mercenary, he said that now they knew exactly who stood in the way of their success and began to take aim at Fan Li's car. And suddenly the robber immediately shot an arrow at the mirror of Fan Li's car and thought that this was definitely going to be a fatal blow to this monster. But to their surprise, the arrow hit the glass and unexpectedly flew off to the side, they could not understand what kind of monster it was that swords and arrows had no effect on. Fan Li remembered that he asked the mechanic to supply him with bulletproof glass, but the mechanic told him if he knew how expensive it was. The mechanic poured water for himself and said that installing such glass would also take some time, which, as he said, they had very little and therefore it was difficult to do. Fan Li asked the mechanic if it was possible to come up with something and said that any part of the machine had to be able to take the blow of a weapon. The mechanic said that it was possible to stick a protective film and with it the glass could withstand a lot and even a bullet and said that for his safety he could stick several layers. The mechanic told Fan Li that this film was cheap and asked how many layers he wanted and Fan Li suddenly said that since it was cheap, he wanted 50 layers. The robber was shocked when he saw this and asked the mercenary if he had seen it and said that he was protected by an invisible barrier and it was definitely an otherworldly creature. He asked the mercenary what he proposed to do now, but turning around he suddenly noticed that the mercenary had already managed to escape from there. The robber said that this scoundrel was a brute and he himself immediately ran away from there, all the while calling him a coward and a weak soldier. The robber immediately began to quickly leave from there and suddenly turned around and noticed that Fan Li on his monster was chasing him and almost caught up with him. But suddenly Fan Li signaled to him and this made the horse very scared and knocked him to the ground, the robber was surprised that the beast could also make such sounds. He lay on the ground and was very surprised when he heard this roar and thought that it was something other than the roar of demons and all his people were also very scared from this. And then suddenly Morgan fell to his knees and asked the merciful God to help them achieve justice and help them in such a difficult moment. Morgan asked God to send these dishonest robbers straight to hell and he wanted them to burn there for their sins forever and suffer as they are now. And then suddenly the scoundrel began to cry and said that he turned on to this sinful path not of his own free will, because before that he was an honest farmer, but life forced him to become a robber. And then Fan Li opened the car door and Morgan said that their prayers were answered so quickly and their God showed himself and he was grateful to him for that. But to their surprise, Fan Li got out of the car, calling the residents idiots and asking them to stop kneeling and take up arms and fight back against these robbers. Morgan was very surprised by this and realized that it was Mr. Fan Li and he was their savior, he thought that their lord appeared to them in the form of a merchant and helped them defeat the villains. Morgan immediately became inspired by this and ordered all his people to follow him and said that they would not let these scoundrels escape from there and would help Fan Li defeat them. And then suddenly all the soldiers began to run towards the enemies with weapons and Morgan ordered all the soldiers not to spare these scoundrels and teach them a lesson once and for all. Suddenly, all the warriors gained strength and began to defeat these robbers and Morgan stood at their head and gave tips to everyone in order to win. And then suddenly all the scoundrels began to retreat from there and Morgan ordered his soldiers to shoot at these cowards who were only pretending to be strong invaders. After this, Morgan approached the body of the respected head of Tamadi and told my lord that Mr. Fan Li saved them all and also saved this city from terror and invaders. Morgan told my lord that Fan Li was the embodiment of the lord on earth and he, riding on his chariot, brought terror to the enemies and they quickly fled from there, frightened of him. Tamadi was still alive and called Fan Li to him and told him that he wanted to tell him something and asked not to interrupt him and listen to his last words. Tamadi told Fan Li that he could not thank him for what he did for Angelinia, but nevertheless he had one more request for him. The head of Tamadi told the student that after his death he wanted him to become the ruler of these lands and continue the affairs that he left unfinished. Tamadi said that he was a weak ruler and allowed the enemies to plot intrigues right in front of his nose and did not prevent this in time and allowed them to attack the city. Tamadi told Fan Li that if he honored Angelinia with his rule, 
then these lands would prosper like never before because he had great faith in his potential. Tamadi asked Fan Li to promise him this and said that otherwise his subjects would not have been able to survive until spring, and he had already saved all these people and asked not to abandon them to their fate. Fan Li hoped that they really considered him a god in the flesh, because otherwise they might not accept the stranger, but first he needed to complete the task and stay alive. Fan Li looked at the head and said that he promised him this and immediately Tamadi calmed down and said that now he could die in peace and closed his eyes. Tamadi told Morgan and Hoya that they had to faithfully serve Lord Fan Li and protect this land and that their children would live in joy and not know grief. Tamadi told Fan Li that from today he handed over Angelinia to him and asked him to manage the city wisely and always protect his people from evil conquerors. And immediately after these words, Tamadi lost consciousness and left this world forever, all the residents were very sorry for my lord because they loved him very much and respected him as a ruler. And then suddenly a system appeared in front of Fan Li in which it was said that the task of seizing the throne was completed and he escaped punishment. Fan Li received a notification with congratulations and he became the ruler of his first lands and the first stage for becoming a great emperor was completed. And for this he was awarded a reward for completing the task and a new map function was opened and a treasure hunt function was opened. Fan Li could not understand all these new functions and suddenly Hui shouted that Fan Li was now their new lord and they had to obey and respect him. And then all the residents bowed to Lord Fan Li and said that their new leader was a hero and he saved them all when they thought there was no hope left. And then Hui approached Fan Li and told my lord that from now on he would serve him and asked what his first order as head should have been. Fan Li thought and said that first they needed to put everything in order there, because after this massacre all the buildings there were destroyed. Fan Li ordered Morgan to bury all the fallen heroes and put the bodies of the robbers in a pile and get rid of them at the stake so as not to remember them again. My lord asked Hoi to count all their losses so that they could stock up on food as soon as possible and slowly return to their former peaceful life. Morgan told my lord that he had to give him bad news and said that due to a fire in the barn, all their grain was almost completely burned out. Morgan said that on the orders of Tamadi, he took people and went to put out the fire, but when they arrived at the place it was already too late and all their supplies for the winter burned out. Residents were shocked to hear such news and asked how they could now survive the winter, because they died of hunger and they began to panic. And then suddenly, my lord Fan Li ordered all the residents to calm down and said that there were no unsolvable problems in the world and they just had to not lose hope. Fan Li asked them not to panic and said that he would take care of the food issue and promised them that they would never go hungry. And finally, Fan Li told the residents that if they understood him, they could now get to work so that they could quickly recover and begin to act. Koya thought that they lacked just such a leader and thought about Fan Li's words that he would not leave them to starve and realized that Tamadi had made a wise choice. Koya asked my lord what they could do with the prisoners and Fan Li asked if there was a dungeon in Angelinia and told him to throw them there for now. Koya told my lord that he did not have to worry about the grain and said that Tamadi was a very economical ruler and before his death he managed to accumulate a substantial fortune. Koya said that with this money they could last until winter and Fan Li was interested and he asked Koya about what amount he meant. Koya asked my lord to follow him and said that he would now show him everything and led him to some building where there were many chests. And suddenly, when Hoya opened one of these chests, Fan Li was very surprised and speechless because there he saw a chest full of gold coins. Koya said that 3,000 gold coins and 5,000 silver coins and these were all the savings of my lord Tamadi for the entire period of his reign. Koya said that this summer was very hot and there was a crop failure throughout the area and grain was now expensive, but this money should have been enough to survive the winter. Koya said that Tamadi understood a lot about agriculture and in previous years they usually sold surplus grain, but this time it was the other way around. Fan Li realized that there was about 4 million money there and he had never seen such money in his life and with that kind of money he would have no worries, but first he had to take Naya to the hospital. And after that, Fan Li returned to his world and when he began to leave the place where the construction was going on, suddenly the police were already there waiting for him. Suddenly the inspector stopped the student and asked if he had seen a strange car covered in spikes there and Fan Li said that he had not seen anyone there. Fan Li was holding this ball in his hands and the inspectors were talking among themselves and said that witnesses saw that car drive into the construction site and went to check there. After this, 
Fan Li took Naya to the hospital and she was immediately given the necessary help and the next day she began to regain consciousness in the central hospital. Naya woke up and Fan Li stood next to her and asked if she woke up and said that she had been sleeping for a very long time and he was afraid that she would never wake up. And then Naya turned to the student and asked Mr. Fan Li what kind of place this was because it was the first time she had seen such buildings. Fan Li approached her and asked her not to make sudden movements and said that she had just recovered and needed peace. Fan Li put food in front of her and she asked what smelled so good, the student said fortunately her internal organs were not affected and the doctor allowed her to eat some porridge. Naya was surprised and didn't understand what kind of porridge dish it was, and after carefully tasting one spoon, she realized that it was very tasty food. Naya quickly began to eat this porridge and Fan Li asked her to be careful and said that if she twitched like that, her stitches could come apart. Naya looked at Fan Li and said that it was very tasty and was like the food of the gods and she had never tasted anything tastier in her life. Naya did not believe what was happening and asked Mr. Fan Li to tell her the truth and asked if they had died, but the student asked her not to say nonsense. Naya said that this place looked like a golden palace and she knew that after death people had two paths and the gods took them with them to the golden palace. Nia said that she heard that it was just as warm there and the sun was always shining and there was the same pleasant atmosphere. And she also heard that demons from the afterlife came for bad people and they nailed sinners to their chariots and took them straight to hell. And then Fan Li realized that it was not surprising that the robbers mistook him for a demon of hell and his appearance seemed to fit well into their beliefs. And suddenly Nia blushed and began to feel bad, Fan Li got scared and asked her where she was hurting but Naya said that she wanted to go to the restroom. Fan Li took her there and thought that she needed to buy some clothes because apart from a hospital gown she had nothing in this dimension. Fan Li told her that after finishing things she had to press there and everything dirty would float away and Naya said that it was some kind of miracle of technology. The student told Nia that he would be busy in the next couple of days and he wanted to hire a nurse to take care of her while he was away. Fan Li asked her to take a smartphone and contact him if she needed anything and Naya did not understand what kind of smartphone it was and how to use it. Fan Li spent the entire first half of the day learning to use a smartphone and after that he went to the bank to buy Tamati gold for money. After this, the worker showed Fan Li the house and said that the owners of the house had emigrated abroad a long time ago and were unlikely to return soon. The worker said that few people rented such huge houses and if Fan Li built this mansion, he could count on a good discount. This huge home had all the amenities including a gym and entertainment room as well as a home theater and jacuzzi for complete relaxation. The worker showed the student the pool in this house and said that in general this house had everything for a comfortable life and he didn't have to think about anything. The worker also added and said that the main thing was that there was a high fence that hid the entire perimeter of the house from prying eyes and he could be there quietly. Fan Li said that he liked everything and asked him to inform him when he would prepare a lease agreement and the employee agreed with him and asked him to rest for now. Fan Li lay on a hammock and thought that now it was possible to say that he had his own stronghold in this dimension and that was great. Fan Li thought about it and decided to send his mother 20,000 so that their life would be easier and thought that a large amount could scare them. Fan Li was resting and thought that it was good there and understood how the rich people felt and asked the system to show his owner new functions. Fan Li saw a drum in which 10,000 gold coins could fall out, or random equipment or characteristics could fall out. Fan Li was surprised by 10,000 gold coins and realized that it was 14 million yuan and with that kind of money he could live like the king of the world. But Fan Li was indignant because the probability of not getting anything was too high and thought why this system was so greedy and did not want to give money. Fan Li read that for one round of the treasure hunt game it was necessary that points but for beginners the first round was free and he wanted to try. Fan Li thought what he was waiting for and immediately began hunting and turned the drum, the student hoped that he would get gold coins and become rich. The student understood that the outcome of this round could turn his whole life upside down and he could immediately turn from poor to rich and start living a good life. And then the drum stopped on a prize called a random hero and the system congratulated the owner on this award and the student was sorry that it was not money. Fan Li was sad but he thought that it was better than nothing but suddenly the system notified him that an additional task had been opened. He was given the task of rescuing Guisha, a talented swordswoman from the kingdom of Varner who was in danger of a sad end and had to be drugged in the city of Turis and killed. 
The goal of the task was to save Guisha before she was harmed and the gain was 35 points and the punishment was to reset the winnings in the hunt. Fan Li thought that if he had failed this task, he would have been left without a prize, and not only that in 50 cases the prize might not come out, he had to complete the task to receive it. Fan Li was very angry at this fact and thought that it was just a robbery and it was unfair because he honestly won the prize in this hunt. But immediately a notification appeared in the system that the owner of the system could refuse to complete the task, but in this case his winnings would be reset to zero. Fan Li wondered if there was at least a photo of the one he was looking for because how could he find her before tomorrow knowing only her name and how it would help him. And suddenly a notification appeared in the system that he could look at the last available photo of Gavesha and a beautiful girl appeared in front of him. Fan Li was shocked by how that same Gavesha looked because he didn't expect that she was such a beauty and he was speechless from such beauty. Fan Li thought that this was where he needed to start and now he was motivated and determined that he needed to complete this task. The student decided to quickly do this and asked to show him a map and a map of the area appeared in front of him and he began to study it. Fan Li realized that this city of Turris was very close to Angelinia and it was wonderful and he could at the same time explore the surrounding lands. Fan Li thought that people from that dimension considered him either a god or a demon and Gavesha a Valkyrie and apparently their meeting was destined by fate. And after that in the evening, Fan Li moved all his things to the new house and began to slowly get used to this new luxurious and comfortable home. Fan Li filled the pantry with food so that he could take it at any time and transfer it to another dimension, he also bought household items and clothes for Naya. Fan Li wanted to look at Nia in this new dress because she was a very beautiful girl and did not even differ from the others in this world. But the student realized that he had to remember the task because a beautiful life was not given to him just like that and he had to earn it. And after the preparatory activities were completed, he went out into another dimension and went to the city of Turris to complete the task. And a few hours later, Fan Li was finally on the spot and learned that Turris was under the control of Prince Charles, the second son of the king. Fan Li noticed this city and thought that Turris looked much more impressive than Angelinia and it seemed that the treasury of this city was larger. Fan Li went into a city cafe and the bartender said that if he was interested in girls, then all the most beautiful girls were there and asked if that was what interested him. Fan Li thanked him and said that he was not interested in this and he only wanted to find out information about someone and the bartender asked who he wanted to know about. And suddenly Fan Li heard some girl talking about how he often came to her and asked if he really came to her when Guisha refused him. The girl said that Guisha was the beauty of the kingdom and he had no luck with her and he had to be content with a girl like her. A resident asked her why she was so talkative and said that even such a noble maiden as Guisha could be taken by force and she would not refuse him. The girl said that Guisha was a Valkyrie and would never stoop to his level and the villager said that she could be tamed. Fan Li listened carefully to their conversation about Guisha and the Valkyrie and he had no doubt that they were talking about the object of his task. And then suddenly a local resident came out to him and told the girl that very soon she would turn from a goddess into an ordinary girl like her and would be with him. Fan Li looked at them and the bartender told him that it was Meyer and he was the prince's personal guard and held a rather high position. Fan Li said that in the conversation he mentioned Guisha and the bartender said that she was a warrior and the prince invited her there under the pretext of helping in the fight against robbers. The student was drinking drinks and the bartender said that during the day Gavesha trained soldiers and this evening she was most likely in his majesty's castle. Fan Li thanked the bartender for such useful information and said that he had helped him a lot and left him a few coins for it. After that, Fan Li went outside and thought that he needed to start searching for Guisha from the prince's castle and most likely she was there. And then suddenly Fan Li noticed that Meyer was buying some strange thing from the seller and grinned evilly and put this thing in his pocket and left from there. And then Fan Li approached the seller and asked if he could tell him about what this guard had just purchased from him. The seller smiled and asked if he also wanted to buy the same thing and said that it was a very effective remedy and could help him a lot. The seller told Fan Li that if he had his eye on an unapproachable girl, he just had to mix it into her food and she would turn them into obedient girls. Fan Li now it became clear from whom exactly Guish was adorned with danger, he thought that this guard was still a scoundrel and he had no honor. Fan Li began to quietly follow this guard and followed on his heels and noticed that this guard went inside the castle and immediately disappeared there. 
Fan Li decided to go inside and the defenders introduced him to the prince and said that a merchant had arrived to him with very interesting goods that could be of interest to him. Personal guard Meyer stood next to Prince Carl and the prince asked his people why they let some merchant in there and did he really give them money for it. The castle guard smiled and told the prince that this was not so and said that he had checked his goods and they were indeed very interesting and of high quality. But unexpectedly, Prince Charles ordered his men to hang this guard, Fan Li looked at all this and was shocked and did not understand what was happening there. The guard shouted and asked his majesty to forgive and have mercy on him and people began to take him away from there, grabbing his hands and not reacting to anything. Prince Charles asked Fan Li if he really wanted to stand there rooted to the spot and asked if he had come there to sell things and told him to tell him everything. Prince Charles ordered Fan Li to get his goods and said that if he was not impressed with his goods, he would go after this guard. Fan Li told his majesty that his goods would definitely not disappoint him because they were of the best quality and he decided to start showing the goods after that. He showed the prince sugar and he remembered that earlier he had found out from Koei the cost of various goods and it turned out that in addition to spices, sugar cane also did not grow in this area. Fan Li learned that while foreign sugar reached these places, it passed through the hands of a bunch of resellers and as a result, only royalty could purchase it. Prince Charles tasted this sugar and said that it was very sweet and he had never tasted such sweet sugar in his life and said that he would acquire it. Fan Li said that he also had mirrors and Meyer said that these mirrors were clear and bronze in comparison with them they were trash and the prince also acquired a mirror. After this, Fan Li showed the prince soap and said that he could wash himself and his clothes with it and it had unsurpassed cleansing properties. Prince Charles tried it and was pleased and said that his goods came to his liking and said that if in the future something amazing fell into his hands, he would buy it. Prince Charles made a promise that he would be the first to buy everything for him and Fan Li agreed with him and was glad that he just raised another 600 coins just like that. Prince Charles asked his guard to take the sugar to the kitchen and the mirrors and soap to Guisha and at the same time tell the people in the kitchen to take dinner straight to her room. Prince Carl told Meyer that today he would have dinner with her and asked him if he had bought what he asked him for for his personal purposes. Guard Meyer smiled slyly and said that he brought what he asked him for and said that it was a very unusual remedy. Meyer told his majesty that this very night she was not supposed to go to him and Prince Charles asked him to hope that she would understand his action. And then Fan Li realized that the prince himself was going to drug Guisha, but it didn't look like he was planning to harm or cripple her. Prince Carl ordered all his people to leave him and Meyer asked the guards to escort the merchant and said that he did a great job today and they were waiting for him in the future. Fan Li began to leave there and realized that it was already getting dark and he needed to quickly find Guisha and take her away from there and thereby complete the task given by the system. And then suddenly Fan Li distracted the guards by asking him to look to the side and said that he saw something moving there and approaching him. And suddenly, when the guard dodged, Fan Li hit him with a shocker and knocked him out and said that he was very naive and believed his every word. After that, Fan Li began to change into guard clothes and thought that there were probably many rooms in this castle and wondered how he could find Guisha there. Fan Li was wandering around the castle and suddenly smelled the smell of fried meat and realized that he had found a kitchen where many delicious dishes were prepared. The workers asked if it was the same sugar that the prince bought today and she wanted to try it, but another woman said that then she would end up on the gallows. And then Fan Li suddenly approached them and shouted and asked what they were talking about and said that the prince ordered to take fruit to Guisha. The woman told him that the order would be carried out immediately and asked if this touchy-feely girl could really meet with the prince today and her friend asked her to keep quiet so that there would be no problems. The worker took a bowl of fruit and, approaching the room with Fan Li, asked Mrs. Guisha to open the door and said that she had brought her fruit. Gavesha told her to come into the room and Fan Li smiled and thought that it worked and he could finally see her after a long wait. The worker and Fan Li entered the room and she looked at Guisha and quickly put the fruit on the table and immediately left there so as not to disturb her. Fan Li looked there and wondered if this was the head, and at that time Guisha was telling the great Balunchi that she dedicated this sacrifice to him. Guisha performed the ritual and thanked him for the strength and courage that he gave her and she wanted and will keep him for the rest of her life. And then suddenly Guisha stopped performing the ritual and asked Fan Li what he needed and the student was surprised how she guessed about his presence. Fan Li said that he came to tell her that the prince was planning to treat her meanly and tonight he would give her an intoxicant and her dinner. 
Gyuisha said that he was his man and asked why he decided to betray his prince and warn her about this danger. She asked if he really wasn't afraid for his life because the prince could punish him for this and family said that he wanted to help her and wasn't afraid for himself. Gyuisha turned around and said that it seemed to her that family was lying to her and suddenly she grabbed him by the scruff of the neck with all her might and demanded to tell the truth. Gyuisha asked Fan Li who sent him there and why he wanted to quarrel between her and the prince and told him to answer her questions right away. She took Fan Li upstairs and he said that he told her the truth and thought that Gyuisha was very strong and it was clear that she was a warrior. Gyuisha said that she arrived there recently, but she trained his soldiers every day and did not remember his face and said that he was not a soldier of Charles. Gyuisha looked angrily at Fan Li and asked if he was really silent and said that he looks like Bulongshi will get two heads today if things continue like this. But Fan Li asked her to stop and said that he came from the land of the gods and he knew a prediction according to which she was supposed to die today. Gyuisha asked about the land of the gods and said couldn't he come up with anything better and said maybe he himself was a god and Fan Li said that he could have ordered it for her. And then Fan Li took out his phone and showed Guisha his city with tall buildings and said that this was the country of the gods from where he came to their city. Fan Li said that they lived in towers almost touching the sky, he said that these were wonderful structures that even housed thousands of gods. The student said that they traveled in chariots without horses and this was the main means of transportation for the gods who lived in this world. The student continued and said that they held feasts in luxurious halls with crystal and all the gods had fun and danced at such events. Fan Li said that all the gods in his world enjoyed the food of the gods and there were many different dishes for every taste and they could choose any of them. Fan Li told Guisha that this was paradise and didn't she see it because there were all the conditions for living in complete luxury. Fan Li continued to scroll through the photos and suddenly he started showing Guisha photos of various girls who were relaxing on the beach and asking if she was looking at it. Guisha was very surprised and asked Fan Li why he showed her photographs of half-naked girls and how this was related to his words. Fan Li looked at his phone and was very surprised because he thought that he had already deleted the photos from his last trip to the beach and he was very ashamed. Gavesha said that in truth she had never seen anything like this and this place was very unusual and resembled paradise. Guisha asked Fan Li what was in his hand and how he was able to put towers and chariots into such a small thing because it was impossible. Fan Li said that it was very difficult to explain and said that he would explain everything to her next time and said that they now had to hurry to leave this place. And then, suddenly, Prince Charles appeared behind Fan Li and asked him who he had been talking to all this time and was he really talking to Guisha? Fan Li greeted Prince Charles and thought that it was very bad because he did not have time to quickly leave this place and complete the task. Guisha approached Prince Charles and said that she was glad that he visited her and asked how she could help and be useful to Her Majesty. Prince Charles told Guisha that they had something to discuss today and told all his people to leave them there alone and he wanted to be there only with her. Fan Li did not want to leave there and Meyer asked him why he stood there and did not follow the order and Fan Li said that he was to blame and began to leave the room. Fan Li was very angry from the fact that he was very close to success and he did not understand what to do next and he had no ideas. Fan Li thought about breaking into the room and finishing off the prince, but he could not do this because the guards would quickly grab him and send him straight to the gallows. Meyer looked at Fan Li and said that it was strange and asked if he was not today's merchant and why did he dress up as the guardian of this tower. Fan Li smiled at guard Meyer in response and said that it was a pleasant meeting and he was very glad to see him again today. And then suddenly Meyer ordered all the people to grab him and Fan Li quickly ran from there and realized that he had already played out and his task was almost failed. At this time, Prince Charles was having dinner in the room with Gavesha and asked her if she was pleased with his gifts because he tried very hard for her. Guisha told the prince that she had chosen the path of a warrior and abandoned many worldly habits, including accepting gifts and asked him to give it to someone else. Guisha asked Carl what he wanted to talk to her about in private and the prince just sat and silently watched her and it was strange. And then Prince Carl told Guisha that they would talk about business later and asked her to first drink a glass of wine and relieve tension and then get down to business. Guisha immediately remembered Fan Li's words that the prince was planning to act meanly with her and mix an intoxicant into her dinner. And then Guisha began to drink wine and Prince Carl looked at her and smiled and thought that she was smart and did everything according to his plan. At this time, 
Fan Li continued to run away from the guards who were trying to grab him and he noticed that people were already waiting for him at the entrance to this tower. And then Fan Li fell into a trap and Meyer grabbed him and said that this bastard was caught and ordered him to say why he came to them under the guise of a merchant. Guard Meyer was interrogating Fan Li, but suddenly his man came running behind him and said that an assassination attempt had been made on Prince Charles. Meyer couldn't believe it and asked his two men to keep an eye on this bastard, and he ordered the rest to go with him to their boss. Fan Li waited for Meyer to leave and suddenly told the guards that he had 600 gold coins with him and said that if he let him go, then they would get it all. The guards looked at each other and decided that they would let Fan Li go and earn money because they were not paid enough and could use some extra money. And then suddenly Fan Li actually gave them a bag of gold, the guards were surprised and said that he really had a lot of gold and they had never seen such money in their lives. The guards took the coins and thanked Fan Li for the money but said that they could not let them go since they were not traitors. Fan Li said that if this was not enough for them, he had another bag of money and they could take it, but only let him go because he was very scared. The guards thought where such a fool got so much money and said that they would take the money but would not let him go and he could talk to Meyer about it. Fan Li actually hid a shocker in the bag, and when the guards wanted to take the bag from his hands, he turned on the shocker and the guards were immediately electrocuted. Another guard was shocked by this and asked Fan Li what he had done to his colleague, but suddenly Fan Li quickly approached him and said that he would soon understand everything himself. Fan Li wanted to attack the guard and he wanted to defend himself from him with his sword and then he was also electrocuted and he passed out from it and fell to the ground. Fan Li thought that these guards were naive fools and thought that everything in life was so easy for them and believed his words about wealth. At this time, Gavesha stood on the roof of the tower with a sword in her hands and was surrounded by guards, Meyer asked her why she killed Carl because he treated her well. Guisha said that this two-faced bastard deserved to die and said that if any of them wanted to go to him, then she could instantly arrange it for them. Meyer asked his people what they were waiting for and said that Guisha killed their prince and she herself confessed to this and ordered them to finish her off. Guisha began to fight with the guards and she was very strong and gave them equal resistance and took out several people in a matter of seconds. Fan Li watched all this and thought that it was cool and his warrior was a very brave and technical woman who could stand up for herself. And then suddenly Guisha felt a strange sensation and did not understand what was happening to her because some unknown force was weakening her will. Guisha thought that it was strange because she couldn't even hold a sword normally in her hands and wondered if the gods really no longer protected her. Meyer now ordered everyone to attack Guisha together and said that the warrior was affected by dope and she was not able to defend herself. Meyer ordered his people to go only forward and the guards began to move towards her with spears and Guisha did not know what to do with them. Guisha wondered if she was really destined to die so ingloriously at the hands of some guards, because she considered it a shame because she had been in serious massacres. She told Balunchi that she had revered him all her life and she had sacrificed many lives and asked him to take her too to the land of the gods and jumped from the roof. Fan Li looked at all this and thought that he had come all this way to save her and she decided to do this and thought what would happen to his task now. Fan Li wondered what he could do, because he couldn't just stand there and watch Guisha fall to the ground and break. Fan Li quickly took out his ball and opened a portal, the student thought if it were possible to somehow turn this hole, he would be able to save the warrior. And suddenly, somehow he managed to do it and Fan Li was surprised that she could actually be turned and realized that now she would be saved. And then Fan Li jumped into the portal and suddenly he came across his apocalypse machine and thought that he had completely forgotten about this thing. Fan Li was not at a loss and immediately untied his hands and immediately closed this portal and began to think about further actions and a rescue plan. Guisha immediately froze in place because Fan Li closed the portal and in this dimension time stopped and she had not yet reached the ground. Fan Li thought that she jumped from a height of no more than 10 meters and considering the speed she developed while falling, the length of the pool should have been enough to land. Fan Li said welcome to the land of the gods to his warrior and immediately he opened a portal in front of the pool and Guisha fell straight into the pool. Fan Li looked at Guisha who had fallen into the water and realized that she was unconscious, he was surprised when she managed to lose consciousness. Fan Li began to pull Guisha out of the water and thought, she couldn't have lost consciousness by flopping into the water because the blow wasn't so strong. 
Meyer looked at the portal and thought what it was because he saw how Guisha fell straight into this luminous circle and immediately disappeared from there. The guards were shocked and said was Gavesha really a goddess and now Bolunchi took her to the land of the gods because she was a brave warrior. Fanli at this time laid Guisha on the bed and began to wipe her body so that she would not catch a cold, and he thought that he was not doing this out of lustful motives. Fanli realized that her clothes were also completely wet and she had to change, but he couldn't do that because he was a good person. And then suddenly Guisha began to wake up and Fanli smiled and said that it was great that she woke up and said that she could wipe herself. But suddenly Guisha grabbed Fanli by the scruff of the neck and pulled him towards her and said that she wanted to play with him now and did not want to wait a second. Fanli was surprised and thought what kind of drug they gave her and realized that because of this she behaved this way and it was strange. Fanli thought that he could not do this because he was a decent and good person and could not take advantage of her in such a state. Fanli immediately pushed Guisha away and said that her body needed detoxification and he went to look for something in his medicine cabinet. But suddenly Fanli realized that he could not move and when he remembered this evening he was always amazed at his naivety because he treated her like an ordinary girl. Fanli realized that this was his fatal mistake and he did not take into account the fact that she was a real warrior who terrified men. But suddenly Guisha threw the student to the ground and Fanli asked what she was doing because he was in pain and she said that he would not go anywhere today. After that, Fanli remembered last night and realized that before he thought that life consisted of nothing but humiliation and yesterday, thanks to Guisha, he realized that this was not so. He realized that the time had come to realize that despite all the difficulties of the past, he had finally reached real life and this life was beautiful. The next day, Gavesha looked through the window onto the street and saw a man ordering food for himself and all the people driving their cars. Guisha immediately thought what an amazing place it was and although it was full of wonders, she realized that this was definitely not the land of the gods. Guisha realized that on the land of the gods the souls of heroes did not bleed, but last night she broke her oath as a warrior and it was very bad. Guisha realized that this meant that this sin could only be washed away by finishing off her first man and after that herself, and then everything would be fine. And then suddenly Guisha took out her sword and she brought it to Fan Li's throat and said that yesterday's events happened only through her fault. Gavesha said that she herself had to bear responsibility for this and immediately swung with all her might to deliver the final blow. But suddenly at that moment, not Fan Li's phone, a message came from his mother and Guisha heard it and immediately froze in surprise. Gavesha looked at the student's phone and remembered that it was the same magical thing in which Fan Li kept towers and chariots. And then Guisha clicked on the message and suddenly heard Fan Li's mother saying that he was an asshole and asking where he got the money from and if he had done anything illegal. Fan Li's mother said that she was busy these days, but when she was free, she said that she would immediately come to him and asked what he did after studying. Guisha did not understand what kind of language it was and judging by the tone, she realized that it was as if she was being scolded and it was an inexplicable technique that was difficult to understand. She thought that this thing realized that Fan Li was in danger and began to cast a spell, but she didn't care and she broke her oath and wanted to atone for her sin with blood. Gavesha swung and now definitely wanted to finish off Fan Li, but unexpectedly at that time Nayak called him via video chat and Gavesha immediately stopped. And then Fan Li woke up and was surprised that Naya was calling him and suddenly noticed that Guisha grabbed him by the neck and held a sword in her hand and he did not understand what was happening there. Guisha said that he woke up just in time and asked what kind of place it was and how they ended up there and said that he could not talk about the land of the gods because she knew that it was a lie. Fan Li asked Guisha to calm down and said that she pinned him so tight that he couldn't even breathe and she let him go and told him to answer questions. Fan Li came to his senses and thought that it was a woman's people, because only yesterday they had a nice time and loved each other, and today she already wanted to finish him off. Fan Li recounted the events of yesterday as best he could and everything that seemed like a wormhole, he explained to Guisha that it was magic. Fan Li said that last night everything happened against his will and she didn't have to worry because he acted towards her like a decent man. Guisha became very angry remembering these events and immediately swung her sword and wanted to finish off the student, but Fan Li asked to spare him because he was not to blame. Guisha immediately threw her sword on the floor and immediately began to cry, Fan Li asked her not to cry and said that he was very afraid of women's tears. 
Gyuisha told Fan Li that from childhood she was taught that she needed to train and believe in the god of warriors Bulongshi and she did this all her life. Thanks to her strong faith, Gyuisha received patronage from above and on the battlefield she was invincible and in her entire life she was never even wounded. But having chosen the path of a warrior, she had to renounce worldly pleasures and preserve her honor, and for violating her oath she was destined to go to hell forever. Gavesha said that apparently hell would become her refuge and told Fan Li that this was not his fault, because she herself was to blame for these problems. Fan Li thought how many superstitions she had in her head and he wanted to wean her from honoring these gods and told her that to lift her spirits she needed to eat well. Fan Li asked Guisha to come with him and said that he would first show her how to use the shower and then feed her a hearty breakfast. Guisha took a shower and felt very good, she would never have thought that washing could be so pleasant because she didn't want to leave there. Gavesha thought that now even hell didn't seem particularly strange to her, and suddenly she thought about what she was thinking about, because even thinking about such a thing was a grave sin. Fan Li told Guisha that her clothes needed to be washed and he prepared fresh clothes for her and asked her to wear these clothes after the shower, which he actually bought for Naya. After that, Fan Li was preparing breakfast in the kitchen and Naya asked Mr. Fan Li why he didn't accept her challenge and the student said that he was just busy. Nia said that people in white coats came to her, but there was also good news, yesterday she ate three times a day and everything was delicious and this place was a real paradise. Fan Li said that she didn't have to worry about the doctors and asked Nia to continue to recover and tomorrow he would visit her and bring her clothes. And then suddenly Guisha appeared behind the student and realized that his name was Fan Li, the student was very surprised by this and, out of excitement, did not understand what he was doing. Nia also saw Guisha and said that she was a real beauty, Fan Li also couldn't say anything and was speechless and said goodbye to Naya. Naya asked Fan Li who she was, but the student quickly ended the call and said that he would call her back later and be sure to tell her everything. Fan Li looked at Guisha and asked if she liked this shower and how she felt after it, and immediately the student's nose began to bleed. Gavesha stood in front of Fan Li in the clothes he had prepared for her and asked the student if all their clothes were so revealing. Guisha said that she did not like these clothes because she remained almost naked in these strange clothes of the inhabitants of this world. Fan Li became very nervous and said that these were home clothes and everyone wore such clothes and asked Guisha to get used to it. Fan Li imagined that if Naya and Guisha always walked around the house in such clothes, then he would become the happiest person on the planet and from such a thought he was ready to burst. Fan Li smiled at Guisha and asked her to sit down and said that she had not eaten anything for a long time and she needed to refresh herself and maintain her strength. Fan Li realized that after the hot shower, Guisha noticeably relaxed and this was also facilitated by the pleasant melody coming from her. Gavesha sat and ate a steak and Gavesha, accustomed to life in Spartan conditions, was shocked by new pleasures because she never thought that life could be so pleasant. And then a system appeared in front of Fan Li and he noticed that the task had not yet been completed and he thought that apparently to complete the task he needed to take Guisha out of Turis. But Fan Li was not clear what Guisha's devotion meant and whether it meant that she would be devoted to him regardless of any circumstances. And then Fan Li read that after completing the task, the system, using hypnosis, will introduce into the hero's subconscious the need to carry out the owner's orders. Side effects were the possibility of partial loss of the hero's personality and damage to her brain, but the owner had the right to refuse to introduce devotion. But by refusing to introduce devotion, the owner would forever lose this opportunity and the hero's behavior would depend on his will and the system would not influence him. Fan Li thought these were side effects, but he didn't want Guisha to lose her personality and turn into a mentally retarded person. Fan Li told Guisha that they would rest there for a while and return to her world and asked if they got out of Turis what she wanted to do then. Guisha continued to eat the steak and said that after what she did to the prince in the kingdom of Varner she definitely would not be welcome and it would be dangerous there. Gavesha said that apparently she would have to run far away from there under an assumed name and spend the rest of her life there. Fan Li asked Guisha if she had considered the option of staying with him and said that after what happened between them, he was supposed to take responsibility for her. Fan Li told Guisha that in Angelinia he had a bunch of stupid people who didn't know how to wield weapons, and if she agreed to train them, he would be very happy. 
Duisha said that whoever betrays the oath given to the gods will be cursed and sooner or later heavenly punishment will overtake her and with her presence she will only bring trouble to them. Gavesha's mood plummeted and she said that she was already destined for a place in hell and said that this was her fate that could not be changed. Fanli said to hell with such a fate and said that she was never injured only because she trained hard and the protection of the gods had nothing to do with it. Fanli asked her to go with him and said that he would show her their city, which was built by people only through intelligence and labor without any gods. Fanley told her that many people were atheists like himself and they achieved success through hard work and not through the help of Sambulongshi. And after that, Fanley and Guisha walked around the city together and the student promised her that he would show her all the interesting places in their city and visit everything today. And until the evening, Fanley took Gavesha to the most interesting places in the city and he bought her ice cream and they visited the cinema. In the evening they went to the hospital and Nia asked Gavesha if she was that same Valkyrie and said that she had idolized her all her life. Nia said that she often listened to songs being written about Guisha and she always wanted to be like her and she was a role model and was a holy woman. Guisha asked Nia not to exaggerate and said that she was an ordinary girl and there was more holiness in Nia than in her, but she fought well. Nia listened to Guisha's words and asked Fan Li to come to her. The student asked her what she wanted him to do to her. Naya asked Fan Li why he didn't immediately tell her that it was Guisha, because she had already come up with something like that for herself, the student asked what she meant. Naya said that everyone knew that Guisha was the chosen one of the gods and had to remain celibate, and if she broke this, she would have to wash away her sin with blood. Naya said that if they were both alive and well, it meant that there was nothing between them, because in the morning at first she thought that he had a new girlfriend. Naya thought that Fanli no longer needed her and she was glad that she was wrong, but although Guisha's morning outfit looked at least strange, Fanli looked at Guisha and thought that in fact she didn't just break her oath last night, but continued to break it until the morning. After that, they said goodbye to Naya and went down to the garage and got into Fanli's car, the student told Guisha that it was time to bring her back. After spending the whole day with her, Fanley discovered that behind the mask of a fierce and independent warrior was hiding a simple and kind girl. Fanley realized that Guisha happily accepted affection and care, and in such a difficult life moment she was just looking for support. But the reality in which she lived all her life required her to hide her tender nature because she constantly had to bravely cope with the challenges of fate. Fanley thought that since she had her own way, it was better to let her go but he did not want to part with her because over these days he had become very accustomed to her. Fanley thought that he could not take advantage of the capabilities of the system and subjugate it to himself because it was not his method and suddenly Guisha turned to him. Guisha looked at the student and said thank you for everything he did for her today and said that she had never felt so good. And after that, Fanley opened the portal and asked Guisha if she was ready and she agreed with him and the student immediately stepped on the gas and they drove into this portal. Meyer and his men suddenly saw a car appear in that place and could not understand what it was and froze in surprise. Fan Li closed the portal and when he looked at the roof he saw no one there and it was strange and after that he quickly left from there with Guisha. The guards hid on the roof and told Meyer that people were telling the truth and Gavesha was a Valkyrie and she had a connection with the other world. Another guard said that they were demons and asked them not to take him to hell and swore to be a good person for the rest of his life and begged them not to come for him. And then Meyer ordered his man to look at what was happening there and said that otherwise he would immediately kill him for not following orders. The guard looked there and told Meyer that there was no one there, neither the chariot nor the luminous circle and everything had disappeared, Meyer didn't understand what was happening there. At this time, Fanley was leaving there and wondered why they didn't chase after them, because when he was assessing the possible development of events, he thought that it would be more difficult to escape from them. And then suddenly a system appeared in front of Fan Li where it was said that the task of saving Guisha was completed and he received the reward of Guisha's devotion. And suddenly a notification came that after 10 seconds the system would carry out an operation to introduce loyalty automatically without the consent of the owner. Fan Li looked at this and thought that in fact he would really like to keep Guisha next to him and the thought that she would leave made him sad. Fan Li thought about what he should do, because if he had done nothing, then in a few moments the system would automatically tie her to him forever. There were two seconds left and Fan Li thought he should take this change as a game and maybe let go of everything and see what happens next. And when there was one second left, 
family shouted and cancelled the implementation and the system notified him that the owner refused the reward for Guisha's devotion. Fanli exhaled and Guisha asked if he was okay and what just happened to him, Fanli asked her not to worry and said that everything was fine. Fanli wondered what he was thinking about because because of his selfish desires, he had just turned a living person into a weak-willed vegetable. Fanli stopped and Guisha said that there was a horse breeder living nearby who was looking after her war horse and believed that it was time for them to part ways. Guisha said goodbye to Fanli and said that she would never forget what he did for her and suddenly Fanli asked her not to leave. Fanli handed her a gift and she asked what it was, Fanli said that it was just a knife and asked to take it as a souvenir and a reminder of him. Fanli said that he would be in Angelinia and told Guisha that if she was passing by, she could look at him and he would gladly accept her. Guisha smiled and left there, Fanli thought that in this backward world without developed means of communication, could they meet again? The student was very sad that he had lost such a girl as Gavesha and after breaking up with Gavesha, Fanli went to Angelinia alone. At this time, the traitor mercenary was walking with his people and he was offended and he said that by this moment he should have become the lord of Angelinia. The mercenary was angry that his such grandiose plans had failed because of some brat and he said that he would soon return everything to him with interest. And then suddenly the man asked his chief to look at something and asked whose tracks were these and said that it was the chariot of a demon. The head of the mercenaries told him not to talk nonsense and said that that brat was not any demon and he himself saw how blood came out of him and he was even wounded. The man said that the tracks were very fresh and the mercenary asked him to follow him and said that now they would find answers to all the questions and everything would become clear to them. The traitor mercenary wanted to see if this brat could pull off some kind of trick this time and surprise them because this time they were ready for anything. At this time, Fanley was pushing his car with all his might, but it didn't want to move anywhere and the student realized that it was a huge problem. Fanley realized that trouble didn't come alone and he first broke up with the beauty and now he's also stuck in the mud and it was an unpleasant surprise. And then suddenly Fanley heard a voice and realized that it was a vile laugh and he had already heard this laugh somewhere before and the student froze in surprise. And then that same traitor mercenary appeared in front of Fanley and greeted the demon and said that that time he almost tricked him and he even believed it. The head of the mercenaries smiled at the student and said that his performance was over and now he would pay for everything that he had done to them earlier and get what he deserved. And when Fan Li turned around, two big guys were already standing in front of him and the mercenary asked if he really wanted to escape and said that he was unlikely to succeed. And then Fan Li climbed into the car and the mercenary ordered everyone to pull him out of there and said that his chariot was stuck in the mud and they were not in danger. All the mercenaries approached the car and began to beat it with all their might and the mercenary told the boss that it was made of metal and they could not split it and he suggested setting it on fire. And then suddenly the mercenary set fire to Fan Li's car and the student thought why he got all this headache because he could just relax in his own world. Fan Li sat inside and thought that it seemed to him that his life had only changed for the better, but he was wrong and made hasty conclusions. Fan Li thought that after the decision to let Guisha go, Everything did not go as he planned, and he remembered and took out a round ball to open the portal. Fanley quickly opened the portal and thought that now he would have to get out of there in disgrace and he didn't even know if he could go back there. And then suddenly Gavesha began to gallop there on a horse and all the mercenaries were surprised and asked who she was and why she was heading there. Gavesha began to destroy all the mercenaries and they began to run away from there to save their lives and Gavesha approached the car and called Fanley. Fanley just wanted to enter the portal and get out of there quickly, but suddenly he stopped and thought was it really the voice of Guisha and was she really coming back for him? And then mercenaries with spears stood in front of Guisha and told her not to approach them, but she quickly dealt with them and headed to the car. The head of the mercenaries looked at it all and realized that it was a Valkyrie from the kingdom of Varner and thought what she was doing there and what she needed. Guisha helped Fanli out of the car and asked if he was okay and the student said that he thought she was already far from there and he was glad to see her. The traitor mercenary looked at them and thought who this brat was after all and why on earth the Valkyrie herself came to save him and how did she know him. The head of the mercenaries realized that the brat had once again managed to escape death, because it was better for their little gang not to mess with the great Valkyrie. The head of the mercenaries told Fanli that if they had known that he was a friend of the warrior Guisha, they would never have dared to touch him and he regretted that everything turned out this way. 
The traitor mercenary asked to listen to him and said that Mr. Fan Li was alive and well and several of his people paid with their lives for the inconvenience caused. The head of the mercenaries asked Gavesha to forget about all this and said that it would be good if they parted peacefully and lived their lives together. But Guisha did not want to listen to his false words and immediately tied up all the mercenaries in this forest and quickly left there with Fan Li. The head of the mercenaries cried and begged for help and said that they were not to blame for anything, but no one listened to them and they were alone in the forest. But suddenly the mercenaries heard some voices and glances from the forest and asked the head to look at this place because they saw some kind of silhouette. And then suddenly wolves began to come out to the mercenaries and the head of the traitor began to pray to God for power and said that it seemed that the end had come for them. At this time, Fan Li told Guisha that she never told him why she returned there and asked if she was really unable to part with him. Guisha said that she returned to him only to return the knife to him, Fan Li was very surprised by this answer and waited for an explanation from her. Guisha said that this knife looked like a real treasure and probably cost half a city and she could not accept such a valuable gift. Fan Li was surprised and thought what she was talking about because he bought this knife in an ordinary army store for several tens of yuan and it was a cheap knife. Although the modern level of manufacturing was clearly something out of science fiction for them and there was no reason to be surprised that an ordinary knife seemed to them a wonder of the world. Fan Li thought that he bought the knife especially for her and said that this would not work, Guisha was surprised and asked what he was telling her. Fan Li said that in their world it was believed that if a donated item was returned back, it was an insult and he was haunted by failures for a long time. Fan Li said that he was still thinking about how he managed to stumble upon his enemies in the middle of the wasteland and now everything became clear to him why this happened. Guisha said that he told her that he was an atheist and did not believe in any superstitions, Fan Li said that it was a reason and not a superstition. Guisha said that if that was the case, then he left her no choice, but if she accepted his gift, she would feel awkward because it was so expensive. Fan Li said that then he would ask her for something later, because there was a generous payment for the services of the warrior, and she asked what he wanted to tell her. And then suddenly Fan Li clung to Guisha and said that he just wanted her to stay with him forever and not go anywhere else. Guisha said that she could not do this and Fan Li asked if she would allow him to break into failure again because he was already almost killed. Guisha said that it was impossible to argue with him and Fan Li said that he was telling the truth because next time they could finish him off. Guisha asked him to know that one day she would still have to leave him and when that moment came, she wanted him not to ask her to stay. Fan Li asked if she really agreed and immediately hugged Guisha with all his might and said that he was very happy and it was great and there was no one happier than him. Guisha asked why he pressed against her so tightly because he was squeezing everything on her and Fan Li said that it was the first time he was riding a horse and holding on to whatever he could. At this time, the residents of Angelinia worked tirelessly and flared up the ground and noticed that the head of Fan Li was approaching them along with some girl. The residents were very happy and shouted that their lord had returned and said that now everything would be different and began to inform all residents about this. Hoya approached my lord and said that he was glad that he returned and Fan Li ordered Hoya to take all the men and more carts because it was necessary to deliver grain to Angelinia. Hoya was surprised and asked where this grain was and Fan Li asked him to follow him and suddenly the head showed them a huge supply of grain. Residents opened the bags and said that there really was grain there and it was great and now they could not worry about supplies for the winter and could live with dignity. Hoya was very surprised and asked my lord how he delivered so much grain there and Fan Li said that he could consider that he did it with God's help. Fan Li remembered that two hours ago he and Guisha went to the food warehouse for the wholesale sale of rice and field crops. Fan Li said that he would take everything that was there and asked how much it would cost, the seller said that there were 6 tons of wheat and barley and everything amounted to 45,000 yuan. Fan Li said that he would also take the pallets, the seller was surprised and said that he would give it all for 500 yuan since he was a very generous buyer. Fan Li transferred 45,500 yuan to the seller's account and he asked where he needed to take it all and said that he would organize the delivery himself. Fan Li said that they did not need delivery and asked to leave them there and said that they would call him when they were finished with their business and asked under no circumstances to enter there. The seller was surprised and thought what they were going to do there and besides, they were dressed strangely and thought that he didn't care about it because he had already received money for the goods. 
Fan Li opened the portal and told Guisha that now all they had to do was transfer everything to another world and the residents would no longer have to worry about hunger. But suddenly Guisha picked up the bag and Fan Li was very surprised and asked what she was doing because there were 24 tons of grain and asked to put the bag back. Fan Li smiled and asked Guisha if she was really going to carry all these bags herself and Guisha asked what else they could do. And then Fan Li got into the car and began dragging the bags through the portal, Guisha was surprised whether it was really so easy to complete this task. And a few hours later there was nothing left in the warehouse and Gavesha told Fan Li that he didn't even sweat and this was a very comfortable thing. Fan Li smiled and said that it was not for nothing that it was said that science and technology were the main productive forces of society and that was cool. Fan Li said that they had loaded the sacks and it was time for them to return, and he thought that it was worth giving credit to Hui because he did not ask him about this grain. Guisha still had not shown her face and Fan Li thought that Angelinia was very close to Turris and it made sense to hide her identity for as long as possible. And when Lord Fan Li returned to Angelinia, some of the peasants began to build a large new barn to accommodate all the grain that my lord brought them. Other residents went to cultivate the land to prepare it for sowing winter wheat and not ask other peoples for any help. There was a lot of work, and due to the lack of workers, they even had to involve captured robbers and mercenaries sitting in prison in the work. Everyone was busy with something except Fan Li and now he understood the life of a lord because he needed to watch how the peasants worked hard and this was a rotten political system. But Fan Li realized that being a lord was nice, but now there was no time to idle and he needed to think about how he could help these people. And then Fan Li called Hoya and asked to walk through their lands together and Hoya said that he was glad to help my lord and was already approaching him. Fan Li said that strong agriculture was the basis for the development of the state and my lord suggested that he first inspect the fields and watch the work of the residents. Koya said that before the onset of winter they would plant wheat and rye there because this way they could harvest the harvest next summer. And then the worker told his people that the Lord was coming there and told everyone to work harder if they didn't want him to send them straight to hell. Fan Li smiled and thought that his bright appearance on the devil chariot was still fresh in their minds, and it was great because they worked harder. After that, they came to another land and Fan Li asked why they didn't plant anything there and Hoya said that it was a fallow field and the wheat was sucking the power from the land. Koya said that if wheat was planted on the same plot for several years in a row, the land would become impoverished and at one point it would simply not produce a harvest. Therefore, they divided all their fields into two parts and used them alternately, and when weeds began to grow on an empty plot, they let cattle in there. Fan Li realized that this was called a two-field farming system and in the same year half of the land was cultivated and the other half was left fallow and this was smart. But Koya said that even this system did not help them and every year they harvested less and less and this was a headache for Lord Tamadi. But suddenly Fan Li told Hoya if he knew that this problem was now easily solved and Hoya was surprised and asked my lord what he was offering. Fan Li asked Hoya if he had ever heard about natural fertilizers, but Hoya said that he was not familiar with this information and was hearing about it for the first time. Fan Li said that by growing legumes, the fertility of the land could be restored naturally, Koya said they were planting beans but he didn't know about it. Fan Li said that nitrogen was an important chemical element for soil restoration and similar fertilizers were obtained from green plants called green manures. Koya heard about nitrogen bacteria and green manure and told my lord that he had to confess and said that he did not understand at all what he was saying. Fan Li said that now they had a lot of grain and they could allocate some of the reserves for some agricultural experiments. And if they increase the productivity of their lands, then the peasants will begin to live more satisfyingly and begin to have more children, and then they will have enough workers. Fan Li said that people freed from land work could create something new and peasants should not be killed in the fields from dawn to dusk. Koya thought that although he did not understand most of what he was talking about, the head speech was filled with zeal and strength and carried hope for a better future. Fan Li asked ere they stopped and said that in addition to nitrogen they would also need phosphorus and potassium, and this mixture was supposed to fertilize the soil. Fan Li said that phosphorus could be obtained from animal bones and eggshells, and potassium was contained in plant ash. Fan Li said that in general he instructed Hoya to resolve the issue with fertilizers and Hoya said that he understood my lord and would do all his demands. Fan Li thought that he could simply buy bags of ready-made fertilizers and transport them there, 
but he was too lazy to travel between worlds every time. And then suddenly a system appeared in front of Fan Li and notified him that he had been awarded 30 points for agricultural modernization. Fan Li was surprised by this and wondered if he was given points for helping and getting points for general knowledge was better than completing deadly tasks. The student realized that knowledge was power and he still had so much knowledge that would become a real revelation for them and would help them a lot. Fan Li asked Hui if he knew that they could improve the two-field system, Koya was surprised and asked how they could do this. Fan Li said that they would divide the land into three parts and sow in spring and autumn, and on the third land they could grow grass to feed livestock. He said that through fertilizers and manure they could maintain the fertility of the land and by growing grass they could increase the number of livestock. Koya said that now he understood everything and said that it sounds very simple and if all this works in practice, then they could forget about the problem of hunger forever. And then suddenly the system awarded him another 30 points for modernizing agriculture and Fan Li realized that it had worked again. But Koya said that now they needed to build a barn and sow winter wheat, and if they had allocated people for his reforms, they would not have had enough hands. Fan Li thought and asked if they had good carpenters and blacksmiths in Angelinia, Koya said that in order to forge iron they went to the blacksmiths to the city. Koya said that they did not have their own blacksmiths, but they had good carpenters, and Koya asked my lord if it was necessary to call them there. Fan Li asked to call them there and said that he would resolve the issue with the blacksmiths and he had an idea for creating a revolutionary invention to increase labor. Koya said that he could not wait to see his miracle invention and said that he would now follow the carpenters and he had not felt such inspiration for a long time. And suddenly at that moment they heard some voice that asked not to take it and Koya said that it was the raiders. The raider took all the bags from the woman and she asked him not to do this and said that there was grain for her whole family, but he took the bags from her and told her to shut up. Koya said that small gangs of robbers showed up in Angelinia time after time and they stole something or killed someone and ran away from there and there was no salvation from them. And then suddenly one girl looked at Fan Li and rushed towards him with all speed and the raiders asked her what she was doing. The girl quickly ran to him and Koya asked him to be careful, but the girl pushed him away and hit my lord in the face with a log and he passed out. The girl grabbed Fan Li with her and dragged him away on a horse, her accomplices asked her to quickly get out of there and said that his people would soon chase them. But suddenly Guisha appeared behind them and threw her spear a long distance and hit one of the mercenaries who was far from her. The mercenaries were surprised who could throw a spear such a distance and what kind of superhuman force they had never seen. Guisha immediately galloped after them and the mercenaries turned around and said that the pursuer had high speed and this thoroughbred horse would soon catch up with them. One of the mercenaries wanted to interfere with Guisha and stood in her way but she immediately dealt with him and continued the pursuit without slowing down. The mercenary girl immediately grabbed Fan Li and disappeared with him behind a tree and held a sword in his throat, and Guisha ran in front of them. After that, at night the girl tied up Fan Li and he asked to let him go and said that he could pay her for freedom with either gold or grain. Fan Li asked if she needed something else and said that he could get anything but she was silent and the student wondered what she needed from him. And suddenly a system appeared in front of Fan Li where there was a new task where it was said that a small group of robbers had settled east of Angelinia. And with their raids they worried the peasants and he needed to destroy them and he had a huge amount of time to complete the task. Fan Li thought that at least he wouldn't have to die for failure and he wondered what kind of reward it was, evolutionary controller. Fan Li was sorry that the task appeared when he was tied up with the help of Guisha and the peasants, they could cope with the robbers without any problems. Fan Li realized that he needed to get out of there and, having found a small stone, he began to cut the rope and then suddenly a girl appeared in front of him and did not let him do it. Fan Li said could she really speak and said that he thought she was dumb and told her to remove her leg and said that she was not his type. The girl asked if he was really so impudent and said that it was not a problem and said that very soon he would start singing differently. The girl pointed a gun at him and told him to walk and look for food for her and said that if he tried to escape, she would gouge out his eyes. Fan Li had to obey and he tried his best to get some kind of food both in the forest and in the lake, but he was not very successful. And then suddenly Fan Li noticed a hare and told her to be quiet if she wanted to eat meat because she could scare away the hare. Fan Li approached the hare and suddenly, making a sharp movement, he got out of her captivity and quickly ran away from there and she asked if he had decided to joke with her. 
The girl began to chase him and said that he was finished, but Fan Li asked if she really hoped to catch up with him with her bare feet. Fan Li quickly ran out of there and suddenly noticed that there was a dead end and wondered why he was always so unlucky and the girl was approaching him. And then suddenly Fan Li noticed a cave and quickly ran there because he realized that this was his only way if he didn't want to get caught. The mercenary entered this cave and told Fan Li to stop hiding and said that she would find him anyway and he would pay for this act. Fan Li threw a stone in the other direction and she ran there and the student thought that she was a fool and would never have caught him. But suddenly the ground gave way under his feet and he fell down, the girl ran after him, but she also fell down next to him. After that, the girl stood on Fan Li's shoulders and asked him not to shake and said that it all happened because of him and they would die there. Fan Li asked why this happened because of him and asked who kidnapped him and the girl almost got out of there but suddenly she fell on him. The girl said that this rock was too loose and asked how they could climb there and they wondered how to get out of there. And so they were stuck in this hopeless corner of the cave and no longer understood how much time had passed, but they could not get out and they were both hungry and tired. The girl told Fan Li that she was thirsty but he said that there was no water at all and she suddenly said that she would drink his blood. But suddenly Fan Li asked her to stop and said that he knew a way to get out of there and she asked him not to waste time and said that she would finish him off. Fan Li said that he told her the truth, the girl said that if he did anything else, he would regret it and suddenly a portal opened in front of them. The girl was very surprised and did not understand what it was, but Fan Li said that he would explain everything to her later and asked her to follow him. They walked through the portal and the girl asked what kind of place it was and Fan Li noticed that they were suddenly in some kind of restaurant. The girl asked where he took her and Fan Li remembered that he and Guisha were walking and he told her that the job was done and he would take her to eat. And suddenly the girl started walking up to everyone and started eating their food right from their plate, they were outraged and asked who she was. She approached the guys and they asked if her mother didn't teach her that taking someone else's things is bad, but she suddenly hit their table with her sword. The visitors asked the manager to call the police there as soon as possible and began to quickly leave the restaurant, the woman started calling the police. And then Fan Li suddenly approached her and told her that he wanted to place an order and he also asked her to help him untie the ropes. And the police quickly arrived there and they took this girl to the station, all visitors say that she was a crazy and violent girl. Fan Li was eating at that time and wondered if he would have problems because the police took her away, but he realized that she herself was to blame. Fan Li thought that the police would not understand anything and thought that now he needed to think about how to get out of this cave. Fan Li took a ladder with him to another dimension and when he started to get out of there he suddenly noticed something interesting. He picked up a stone and realized that it was coal and he hit the jackpot and it was very easy to mine coal there and besides, it would be useful to the peasants. And suddenly the system appeared in front of him and congratulated him on the fact that he destroyed the robbers and received the Evolutionary Controller Award and 35 points. Fan Li was surprised why the task was completed because he did nothing because he didn't even know where this gang was. He wondered if the two whom Guisha killed and his kidnapper made up this gang, and by getting rid of them they completed the task. And then Fan Li wanted to check out the award, the Evolutionary Controller, and suddenly earthly time and a rewind button appeared in front of him. Fan Li thought it was really a player and there were movies there and pressed play and time began to pass but nothing happened. Fan Li had been standing there for half an hour already but nothing was happening and he decided to press rewind and suddenly he changed his mind and decided to press pause. Fan Li stood in shock and thought that if he understood everything correctly, then out of stupidity, without thinking about it, he made a huge mistake. After that, Fan Li returned to his dimension and, opening the laptop, realized that this was unthinkable because time had indeed fast-forwarded. Fan Li thought that apparently the Tenmo era meant time in that dimension and it turned out that he could control time in both dimensions. Fan Li sat and thought about everything and thought about what he had gotten himself into without thinking about what he was doing in this dimension and what it led to. And then suddenly his mother called him and asked where he had been for a whole month because he didn't answer the phone or show up at the dorm and she was very worried about him. 